When are you no longer a beginner witch? And what can you do to help advance your spiritual practice beyond the beginner basics? These are tough questions because everyone's spiritual journey or personal practice is different as their own life experiences are shaping their current circumstances. Yes, we all have basic needs and desires that resonate with each other, but the lives that we have led differ in minute or in large ways. Someone growing up in Canada will have a different experience than someone growing up in Belarus, for instance. However, behind all these experiences lies the lessons that we have learned and hopefully the wisdom that we have gained in the process of living. When do we know that we are no longer a beginner on the path of the witch? Or any practice for that matter? In my opinion, it's when we actually live our craft, our tradition, our spiritual practice. When everything that we do resonates with our beliefs. This is a wisdom that can only be gained through experience. We have to live our tradition or craft in order to gain the experience necessary to move beyond the basics. So how do we achieve that? And when do we know that we're no longer beginners? Books can teach us so much. I learned almost everything from books at first. I read and still read voraciously, but reading isn't enough. You have to actually do the work to try it out for yourself, to customize it to suit your needs and your circumstances. Play with it. Book learning can only be turned into wisdom through experience, otherwise you'll just be an armchair witch. And after a while, the books you read start to all sound the same, and they offer the same advice, and they talk about the same things. You begin to find it difficult to find a book that has something new to offer. Does this mean that you're advancing in your practice? Well, only if you actually practice and not just read about it. It's also about the little things. It's not just about the Sabbaths or the full moon rituals. It's about the daily things, the small things that reflect who it is that we are, or at least who it is that we wish to be. Getting up and greeting the day in some fashion, communing with the natural world around you daily, asking ancestors for guidance on big decisions, talking with your spiritual guides or guardian spirits, seeking relationship with the fair folk and talking to them every day, leaving daily offerings or at the very least weekly offerings in reciprocation, being a part of your own environment, a contributing and beneficial member, honoring where your water comes from, buying locally produced food as much as is possible, helping to conserve native species, helping others in general, experiencing the elements viscerally and not just as an abstract concept. So going out, feeling the wind and rain on your face or the snow whirling around you or the sun shining through the leaves of the trees or the river as it quietly passes by, establishing deep connections and relationships with all of these helps to make the abstract concepts, such as the elements, spiritual guides, ancestors, etc., become something real, something substantial. But what happens after that? Well, you will have to learn to become your own teacher. You will have to lay aside the words of others for a while and find out what it is that you have to say in your own practice. You can't be somebody else, and so your practice will not be exactly the same as another person's. You can be inspired by someone, you can go out and try to do what they do, but your results and your experiences will be different because you are different. Being your own teacher also makes you learn to trust yourself. You will stop asking yourself, am I doing this right? And Instead, you'll simply get on with it. Your own self-confidence will grow the more you trust yourself. As well, something to bear in mind is to consider what your practice looks like when no one is watching. You never stop learning. 
Do not fall into the trap of believing that you know all there is to know about the craft or a particular tradition. Keep reading, keep learning, but trust yourself and experiment. Do the work. Make the time every day to do something that resonates with your spiritual practice and trust in yourself and in the process. This is only a small glimpse into what it means to move from a beginner status to a more advanced practice. There are many other elements involved, things that will only become apparent as you do the work and advance in your craft. Remember, however, that simply because you are more advanced on your own path, it doesn't make you better or more important than others who are just starting out on their own paths. In the process of learning, everyone is winning. So, beware of the ego at all times and look to the natural world for guidance in this matter. And never stop learning. Blessings to you.